Uh, welcome to our 2022 Surveyor Legend 252 RBLE. Starting right in the back bumper here. If you just kind of reach in, pull that cap out of there. Inside of the back bumper, you're going to find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears in the adapter here. It's helping you hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit. Keep things that bit fresher. Right around the corner there, you're going to find a stabilizer jack. You'll find them in each corner of the trailer as well. What they do is they just run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so, and that'll just get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you got in the unit right now, just to keep things firm while you're out camping. Right ahead of there, marked by that sticker, you've got your little point drains. They're just kind of right in the back here. You get a hot line and a cold line. Basically, just open up that valve, allows the water system to drain itself out. The purpose of that would be if you're leaving the trailer for a while and you don't want your water going stale or stagnant. Or if you're getting ready to winterize the unit, you just want to drain all that water out before getting anything through. Another step forward from there, you're going to find your sewer system. It's that cap there, you just kind of press on it, give it a turn, you can pull it on out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had, so that'll attach the same way where you're just pressing it in, giving it the turn until it clicks. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black, so that black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is going to be filled from your toilet. It's, of course, going to be your dirtiest water, so you'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank's going to be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically cleaner water, you'll dump that last just to help keep that hose as clean as possible. Up from there, you get your power inlet. So you're just going to pop this port open, and as you do that, you'll find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with this notch here. Press those in together, a little eighth turn will lock it into place, then you get the thread collar in the back there to really lock it down. Following the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end. Most campsites will have that. You can plug straight on in, and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter, so if you're looking to plug in to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. So right beside there is a black tank flush. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically that's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes causing that misread. So what you'll do is just take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water and open up your black valve and that'll just flush out that tank and rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. In the center, you've got your city water inlet, same water hose will plug into there, turn on the water and that'll pressurize your water lines throughout the unit. And then beside that's your cable and satellite inlet, coax cable plug into there, fires up at your TV location. Coming down the side of the unit, up towards the front here, and we've got your fresh water inlet. So you pop that cap out of there, water hose into there, turn on the water, and that fills up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent right there. Kind of straight down and underneath, you'll find your fresh water tank drains. So you just open up that valve, it just drains itself out. So we'll just let that go for a bit here. Up from there, you're going to find your hot water tanks. That keyway there, you can line that up and then you pop it on open. All your controls for turning this guy on are just inside of the unit. Before you ever turn it on, though, you just want to hit that re relief valve right there. Make sure that shot of water comes out. That bit of water coming out of there is just letting you know this tank is full. It's safe to fire it up and you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Once you're done, just close it back down, lock with the keyway. Add from there, you get your storage compartment. Magnetic latch just holds it open for you. This customer's opted to go with a bunch of accessories, so we've just got them all stored in here. We've got a couple of campsite chairs, extra water hose here for them, water regulator, a leveler, as well as the weight distribution hitch. Right down inside of here is the original water hose comes with the unit. Then you also get your park adapter here, so your 30 amp end and then a 50 amp end. This storage compartment does also see straight through to the other side. Right around front of the unit, you got this little black box here up on the frame. So basically that's your battery disconnect switch. So with that, it pointed up, that's it then turned on, turned over the side there, that's it then turned off. The unit is prepped with solar and it is all hooked up. So you can just leave that right on. That'll just allow the solar panel to keep that battery charged for you. Battery itself is housed inside of this box right here. So as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or your 750 tier tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. And like I said, it is also solar charged. Underneath this cover here, if you just pull those two knobs towards you, open it up, you get access to your propane tanks. For the video, we'll just pull this right off. And we can show you that change over in the back there. So it's currently green, just letting us know we've got propane in the system and the arrow pointing over here. So running off of this tank. All right, if we go red, it's just letting you know there's no longer any propane in there. At that point, you just flip over to the other side, run off of this one while you get the other tank filled. In front, you get a power tongue jack. So on the left, there's a little light switch. On the right, up is up, down is down. You do have the pet addition unit here as well, so you do have the leash latch right up front there. We've just got that for your chains for now. Other end of your storage compartment here, flips on open, and right up on the wall, you do have this dual function light. So on the bottom there, that switch over towards the wall, that's it in single function, so that's just on is on. And the center is off, and then off to the left, pointing over to the other side there. That'll be that the, the uh, switch now in two. That's going to be dual function, so it'll use the motion sensor. So without motion, it'll turn itself off in a minute or so. Once it senses motion again, it turns itself back on. So you can kind of see the rest of the accessories in here. 
And we've also got manual overrides up on the side over here. You still have one here that is for your slide out. We'll show you where that goes in in a second. The small little S hook there, that's gonna be for your tongue jack up front. And this one right here with the three quarter inch end is gonna be for all of your stabilizers. You do also have a quick connect quarter inch drive, three quarter inch bit. So you can run your stabilizers with those as well. Once we get to the back, I'll be able to show you the unit does have a observation camera installed. This is gonna be the monitor for it. It's stored right inside of there. I've got your outside kitchen here as well. So once we get that opened up, I'll come and grab all this stuff to set up. Towards the back, you get your entrance there first. So we'll use that in a minute. This hole right there, you'd stick one of your rods straight in through there and that's your manual override for your slide out. So if your batteries were to die, you can still run it in or out. Up from there, you're gonna find two exterior speakers. In the center there, you get your porch light. Kind of beside that, you get your stove vent. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you wanna make sure this flap here is opened up with your fan inside turned on to evacuate said fumes. Once you're done, you can just kind of press it back into place and it clicks in there, prevents any sort of dust from kicking up in while you're traveling. Down from there, you get the exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just wanna make sure that's not blocked off. It does get hot. Cable and satellite outlet, as well as a power outlet for you back here as well. So you can have TV outside. And then in the back is your exterior kitchen. This is magnetic latch again, just holds it open. Get a 120 volt fridge back here. So as long as you're plugged in, this guy's going for you. Underneath it, just pull that out and slide it off to the right. And this is where we'll be setting up your exterior kitchen. So I'll just go and grab everything for that. So this part right here, you can see it's got the three big holes and then the one small one in the back corner. Those are gonna line up with your four feet here. So of course for that one small one, we're gonna need to pull that foot out. It just unscrews from there. And then you're gonna line up those three other feet and let it sit into place. And then once you've got it sat in place, that foot comes back into the back here just to kind of lock it down. And then your little sink here just flops in. Get your propane hose. So you got that quick connect little valve right there. So that valve closed off, you can operate it. With it opened up, you cannot. So it's just kind of an added safety. So you got to close it off before you disconnect or connect your hose. And you can undo it. You run that hose down through the back, attach to the griddle. Once you have it attached, then you can open up that valve. And then underneath the unit, you've got your connection for it. So it's just got a dust cap there. Otherwise it is all the same. Turn off that valve, push the collar back, insert your hose. Once it's inserted, open up the valve. Then you can come up to the griddle, press that knob in, and just kind of rapidly turning it past light. And once it clears all the air to the propane line, you can see she fires right up. Once you're done, just turning it back off, letting it cool down, and then storing it back away, just the opposite of how we've had it. So the one thing I will go over is the hose. So you're just gonna close off that flow of propane, undo your hose, put that dust cap back into place, bring it back up top, undo it at the stove. And then I just like attaching it to itself, just ensures that nothing's getting inside of there. And then you're just storing it back away. Then for the sink, you can see it is just kind of the single basin. There is no drain for it. You're just pulling it out and dumping it. And lastly, off to the side here is your little spray port. So you can open that up. You get that little notch in the two corners there. You're gonna line them up with those ears there. You just press it into place, give it a little turn. And that'll tie it into your cold water system. So you will not get any hot water out of here, just cold. And then you have the standard garden hose in there as well. Before storing it away, you just kind of want to extend it out, open it up. Just make sure you get it drained out just because you don't want to be storing that water. Taking it down is just the opposite of what we've just done. And then right in the back here, you get your spare tire. Off to the side, you get your ladder so you can get up top and check all your seals up top. And then in the center there is your rear view or observation camera. So now we'll make our way inside of the unit. Your assist handle just up 90 degrees and it falls into place. And you can open up your door. Door is on a friction hinge. It sits wherever you leave it. Blue handle in towards the center and then you can pull the legs on out. That little tab there, if you push that in, you can extend or retract your legs just based on your campsite needs. So as we come inside, first things first is right on the left there, get your fire extinguisher. So that's standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. 
up from there you get all your switches here so on the right side you get your interior lights does all of your interior lights as well as a little orange accent light right above the slide porch light center right there so you have that little amber light outside in the center is your awning led so it'll do that whole light strip then your slide out rooms in the center left here press and hold out and that slide will make its way out once that slide's fully extended we're going to hear a couple of clicks from the motors letting us know they've reached their stall once you hear that you'll let go of the button left side there you get your awning so press and hold extend and the awning will make its way out once that awning's fully extended we're going to see a little black flap come down as well as the black metal tube once you see that you're going to want to stop if you're to continue extending it can actually wind itself up backwards in which case your fabric will be underneath the tube allowing it to then hold water accelerating the growth of mold and mildew so there's the flap and there's the tube so we'll stop right there now if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyway, so what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you're just going to pull straight down on it. Then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. But if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the rest of the bending up. And once you do know they're supposed straight, press and hold retract, the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just going to watch to make sure that your fabric is over top of the tube. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, it is catching all that wind. So you do just want to bring it back in again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Down below all your switches here is your solar charge controller. So like we said outside, you do have a solar panel installed. So this is controlling how it is charging the batteries. Your battery type has been set. So you're just gonna be that wet type. Then you can press amperage and voltage just to kind of see what you're doing. So 0, 0.0 is just what we would be charging at. So no charge right now, just because we're inside of course. Then you can see the rate at which it's charging. And then you can see what your battery is currently at. So 13.6, that battery is fully charged. Right up above that, you get that switch there. Turn that switch on, just turns on your wine guard connect, gives you your Wi-Fi and satellite. Okay. And then towards the front of the unit into the bedroom, your light switch is just right here on the wall there. Sliding door into the bedroom. So you just have that little latch right there, you can slide the door then. Blinds throughout the unit, just on that tension system, so you just kind of sit wherever you're leaving them. Closet space on either side of the bed, with a little drawer in the middle as well. USB and power outlet down there too. The totem store, another accessory that the customer has chosen to go with. A couple of reading lights right above the head as well. You'll notice this bed looks really tall, so that's just again because we've got another kind of uh, option in the mattress, sorry, an upgraded mattress in the unit here. There is a little bit of storage kind of in the backs there as well. Same sort of closet space on the side here with the drawer underneath. And again, USB and a power outlet. Emergency exit on this side here, you pull that red tab to get rid of the screen, take the sandal here, throw it outside, hop on out. And then right behind me here is your TV backer, so if you're looking to have a TV in the bedroom, it's going right here. Cable and satellite outlet for it, as well as a power outlet for it. So right above your light switch to that front bedroom is your thermostat. You're going to press that bottom bar there to wake it up. It'll start from off, then you can hit it again, it'll come into fan low, so that that's going to turn the air conditioning fan on low. No cooling, just moving some air around. Fan high is of course just your high fan coming on now. So same air conditioner fan, just moving some air. After high fan, it'll come into cool high. So at this point, it'll have the compressor cutting in and out as needed to give you your cooling, leaving the high fan on all the time. Cool low, so again, compressor on all the time. Sorry, compressor in and out as needed, low fan on all the time. After cool low, it'll come into cool low auto. So at this point, both the fan and the compressor will cut in and out as needed to give you your on-demand system. Cool high auto, of course, same thing, just now using the high fan. Temp selection is gonna be with your arrows there at any point. After cool high auto, if you hit that bar again, it comes down into heat, it'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on the furnace. The furnace will be moving its air through all of our little portals that you see throughout the walls. First couple of times you're on that furnace, you might get a bit of a smell throughout the unit. That's just a new furnace smell and it will go away. 
So after heat, if you hit that bar again, it comes down into off and then just cycles back around. Straight up above there, you get a couple of lights here. As well as some storage up top. The couch here uh, pulls out. Nope, oh, recliners. So little pullers on the side there, you just pull that out, kicks out the feet for you. USB charging as well as a power outlet. Same emergency exit here that you had in that front bedroom. Into the slides, you have your dinettes here. You've got that push button light up top. Pretty straightforward. The table here, if you wiggle that up and out, you can get it out of its legs. The legs will then lay down. You can wiggle them out of their bases as well. Little black kind of ledges there. The table will then sit down under those. You'll take your back cushions to fill in the dinette and create another bed. Down here, you're also going to find your LT detector. Propane's heavier than air. It sits on the floor. That guy detects it. It starts going off just like a smoke detector would. Entertainment area here, it's kind of right behind the TV. You got your power outlet for it, and down below that is your antenna outlet for it. So on the side there, you get that little push button there, it turns on that green light, letting you know your antenna's then turned on. Stereo down below, it's the power button there, turns it on. Zone one is gonna be your inside set of speakers. Zone two is your outside set. AM, FM, you can get through all your bands. USB just right down in the bottom here. Bluetooth, connect to your phone. Source, if you hit that, you can cycle through all the other sources. If you press and hold, you can get into your settings. So like I said, the power button there turns it on. If you press the power button again, that'll just mute it. Press and hold to turn it off. Underneath a little bit of storage. And then in the kitchen here, so you have your storage right up top. On that left side there, you're gonna find that binder. That binder's got all of your owner's manuals, any keys, anything like that for the unit you find right in there. Then just some more open storage there. Above the sink is a little light. It's just on its own center push button. The covers are just soft plastic, so nothing hot on them. Hot and cold water, of course. The sink head here is a little fancy, so if you just kind of turn it uh, clockwise, that'll have it then just running as your normal sink would. If you turn it counterclockwise, that'll then activate the shower head feature. Bottle opener on the side, a little bit more storage down below. And then your drawer space here as well. Kind of straight up from there, you do have a power outlet here. Inside that is your microwave, so it's standard just like home. Down below that, you have your range vent. You have your light there as well as your fan. This is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. For the stove, the bifold cover just flips on back. You're gonna take the knob there, push it in towards high, hit it with a sparker, and you can see she fires right up. I will just mention real quick here that the first couple of times that you go to use your propane system, especially if you've been away from the unit for a while, will take a minute to fire up just because it'll have to clear the air to the propane lines. It's perfectly normal. Open up the oven and the knob on the right there, if you push that in, that little flame, hit it with the sparker. And again, just once it clears the air out of that line, you can see that pilot light gets going. Once you have that pilot light going for a couple of seconds, then you can release that knob. The flame will then hold itself, turn up to your desired temperature, and she fires right up. Once you're done, if you turn it back down just to pilot, it'll hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're traveling or leaving the unit, you just make sure it's right off. Button on the right there, turns on all your knob lights as well as your oven light. Return air grill down below is just for your furnace, so you just wanna make sure it's not blocked off. Your fridge here, all your controls across the top. This is the 12 volt fridge, the power button there, turn that on. So plus minus there, of course, just selecting your temperature. Five is gonna be coldest, one is gonna be cold. And then right there, so you can see the freezer section is filled in. So it's just controlling that temperature. And you hit that, and that's gonna be your fridge side. The nighttime mode on the side there. So basically just allows it to run a little bit more efficiently for nighttime, just to prevent any sort of noise. Then you have your fridge down below here and your freezer up top. And down underneath the fridge is your power converter. So you're gonna press the top and center and it pops on open. All of your breakers in the middle there, whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. On the right side, you get all of your fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. And then into the bathroom in front here, have this closet space off to the side there. And right inside the entrance to the right side is your light switch. The toilet just flips on open. You get your flusher on the right side. Right beside the toilet is your GFI protected outlet. It's pressed on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Medicine cabinet here, flips on open. And then you can see you got that little strap on the side there. Just sits into this tongue as your travel strap. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course. And kind of down below that, you've got your monitor panel. So you can see your water pump switch on the right side there. So that's just your water pump then turned on. Drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. 
in the center here, electric water heater. So that's just turning your water heater on with electricity. And on the left side there, it's a water heater with gas. So turn that switch on, it'll fire up on gas. If you would ever get that check light there, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, just off and back on to reset it. On the side here, you've got your heated holding tank system. So basically just a little uh, electric pad stuck to the bottom of your holding tanks. You can turn those on just to prevent them from freezing once you get down to around zero degrees. And then a little bit of storage down underneath it. Just be mindful of your drains, your water lines for the kitchen sink, of course. And then in the shower, you get your standard head and hose, hot and cold water. Just slides on over, clips into place. Once you're done, just push it out. Retracts automatically. And then lastly, right above our head is your roof vent. So you're just turning that knob to open it up in the back corner. You get the switch there, turns on the fan. And that's about it for this unit. So if you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.